Welcome back. I hope you have finished the Wizard CRUD APIs. Let's briefly go over it. First, let me show you the changes that I have made. Now I'm on wizard crowd branch. Git status. As you can see here, I modified four files and also I add four files and a package. And this is the wizard package under src test. And inside, there are two files wizard controller test and a wizard service test. Sometimes viewing this in terminal is not very convenient. Thanks to all kinds of cool features that IntelliJ offers, I just turned on the IntelliJ version control integration feature. So now IntelliJ can help us visualize changes. For example, it can color the file names. In my IDE, orange color means untracked new files. Cyan colors means modified tracked files. So first, let's take a look at the two modified test files under artifact. We can click here, commit. Let's first look at artifact service test. Okay. As you can see, this is the new version, and this is the version before wizard crud And you compare the differences or the diffs. If I scroll down, as you can see, I added some comments. For example, for GUnit 5, we need to use this annotation at extend with marketo extension dot class. And also here I add comment to explain the meaning of this at mark and also this at inject marks. Feel free to add those comments into your own source code. That can make it very clear. I also added the keyword this, this dot, in front of all the references to the fields. For example, instead of artifact repository, now we're using this dot artifact repository. Well, it's okay you don't have this dot, but I just want to make it consistent. And once you see this dot, you know that this object is a field in the current class. So it's optional, but I prefer to add it. Also, in test update success, Here, I commented out the update.setID. Since based on the API documentation, the front end may not send an ID in the request body. So I just want to be consistent with the API documentation. So here, I changed line 162. I also changed line 174. So now it is a string literal instead of update.guid because this one would return null. That's what we do not want. So make sure you apply the changes to your artifact service test class. Okay, that's all for artifact service test. I also made some minor changes in artifact controller test class. What I did is to remove some unused import statements. Remember, it is always a good idea to remove not used or unused import statements. IntelliJ will actually gray out the unused import statements, so it's pretty easy to recognize those. OK. Now, let's talk about the wizard CRUD APIs. As you can see, I added several new files. 
wizard controller, wizard service, wizard not found exception, and wizard DTO to wizard converter under the wizard package. I also modified the wizard class. Then under test, I created a new package called wizard, and it has two new test classes, wizard controller test and wizard service test. Next, let's briefly go over each of them. So here is wizard controller. We have wizard service, we have two converters, and this is dependency injection constructor. But find all, find wizard by ID, add wizard, update wizard, and delete wizard. Okay. For wizard service, here we inject wizard repository. This is find all, find by ID, save, update, and delete. Okay. Did you encounter problems when you try to delete a wizard from the database? If so, what was the error message? Well, it turns out that before we delete a wizard, we need to remove this wizard's own artifacts. If you're familiar with database, we should remove all the foreign keys that points to this wizard to be deleted. That's why line 47 is wizard to be deleted dot remove all artifacts. So let's click into this method and see how I remove a wizard's own artifacts. Because in this project, removing a wizard should not remove all the artifacts. The wizard is gone, but the artifacts stay. And here is how I remove all artifacts. Okay, I missed S, right click, refactor, rename. Remove all artifacts. First, we're going to iterate the list of artifacts that this wizard owns. And for each of them, we're gonna set its owner to null. After line 60, the artifact no longer points to or references to this wizard to be deleted. And then line 61, we're gonna set null to this dot artifacts. After this step, remove all artifacts. Then we can safely delete this wizard. Next, let's take a look at wizard. Besides this new method, remove all artifacts, I made another modification. IntelliJ also marks this change. If you look at here, this screen here means this is a new addition. We just added in. This add generation value strategy equals generation type dot auto will actually let Spring Data, to be more specific, hibernate to help us automatically generate an ID. And by default, it starts at one. So auto here means auto increment. So the first wizard inserted will be ID equal to one. The second wizard will get ID equal to two and so on and so forth. As I said before, in practice, many companies have their own ID generation algorithm, like Twitter's Snowflake algorithm. But in this tutorial, I think this ID is enough. But I do not recommend you use auto increment ID in a real system. You need to come up with your own ID generation algorithm. Okay, I also added a new converter. That is to convert a wizard DTO to wizard. This is useful in add wizard and update wizard handler methods defined in wizard controller. Next, let's take a look at the two test classes. Wizard service test. As you can see, we have test find all success, find by ID, not found, save, update, 
Update not found. Delete. Delete not found. This file looks very similar to the artifact service test file. Then here is the wizard controller test. So we have find all wizards, find wizard by ID, not found, add wizard, update wizard, update wizard arrow with non existent ID, delete success, delete not found. Okay. Last but not least, we also had a new exception. This is called wizard not found exception. Since we have this exception, we have to modify the exception handle advice to make sure this advice is aware of this new exception because this guy will handle this new exception. Okay. As you can see, IntelliJ already marks these two lines as modified. So what I did is I add the second parameter to this exception handler. Now this handler is handling two exceptions. I also changed this one. This one was artifact not found exception. That's pretty specific. But now since we're handling both, I'm using a more general type called exception. So the message here will either be artifact not found or wizard not found. Okay, that's all the changes. So let me close this. First, let's run all the tests. Right click, run tests in Java package. As you can see, now we have 33 tests. And hopefully, they all pass. Okay, they all passed. Very good. Next, let's launch our project and do some integration testing in Postman. Okay, Tomcat started on port 88. Next, let's toggle over to Postman. In Postman, I organized my APIs into two different folders, artifact and wizard. I highly recommend you organize your APIs. That makes this list very well organized and easy to understand. All right, so find all wizards, send. Okay, we have three wizards. Albus has two artifacts, Harry Potter has two, Neville has one. Find a wizard by ID. That's good. Add a wizard, send. Update a wizard, send. Now this is updated Harry Potter. Delete a wizard, delete Harry Potter. So now if I find all wizard again, Harry is gone. We only have three. Let's toggle over to IntelliJ. Before we commit all the changes, I want to do two more changes or refactoring. In other words, to make our code clean and more maintainable. In the next video, let's work on the refactoring. I will see you in the next video.